Hi, I'm Phil Constantine, and on this Travels with Phil, we're looking at the Battle of Gettysburg. There were maybe 120 generals alone at Gettysburg out of the uh, quite a few uh, soldiers on both sides. So let's take a look at them. On the southern side, it went from general, lieutenant general, major general, and brigadier. The order of the uh, way they divided up the army was corps, divisions, brigades, and regiments. So let's take a look at the Army of Northern Virginia, starting from the very top. That's Robert E. Lee. He was the general. That's the highest rank. He was the Army of Northern Virginia. And within that, there was three corps. Now, here are the commanders for the third corps. This is James Longstreet, one of the more uh, famous of the uh, generals. Now, under that, he had the McLaws Division, which was headed up by Lafayette McLaws. You'll be able to see all the names and uh, where they were assigned here underneath them. Now, what, with underneath the corps then became their brigades. And each one of the brigades had a different commander. Now, these were almost always brigadier generals. And in a few places, a very few places, you'll find one where a colonel stepped in, and that's probably because the general was killed or incapacitated for some reason. Now, also in the first corps was Pickett's division. And this is uh, George Pickett of the famous Pickett's Charge, probably the most uh, famous battle there at uh, the uh, Battle of Gettysburg. This is where the Confederate soldiers marched across about three quarters of a mile, maybe up to a mile, open field directly at the Union soldiers. Major defeat for them. And uh, this was the era when photography really first started getting done. And uh, Matthew Brady, uh, there's a few other folks out here that uh, went out and did lots and lots of in the field photography. Uh, you can tell there's a certain studio quality about a lot of uh, uh, Brady's work because uh, he did them in studios or he set up portable studios where he could do work. Some of these were done after the uh, fact. They would pose in their uniform. Some of them were done fairly close. Some of them were done before the Battle of Gettysburg. Some of them are not very good quality photos. You know, they may have only been a small one. As you can see, some of them are uh, paintings. Henry Louis Benning. Not all of them were in their uniforms. Some people had their own uniforms. This one obviously is not a, what you consider a standard uniform. Now the second corps was headed up by Richard Ewell. And he's not as well known except to uh, Civil War aficionados. More of his uh, lower commanders are, are known better than him, such as Jubal Early. Only time I've ever seen the name Jubal. He was a major general. Now, quite often, the people heading up the corps were major generals or lieutenant generals, and then you'd see major generals at the division level. So most of these folks, again, are brigadier generals. Normally, the brigades are named after them. Now, Johnson was one of the better uh, generals out there. I'm sorry, I'm confusing my Johnsons. And uh, Stewart is not, uh, this is a different spelling of Stewart than the standard way. A lot of these folks went into politics afterwards. Uh, several of them were elected governors. Several of them became senators. Several of them were killed. Still in the second corps, there were, I think, three or four divisions within the, or three or four different groupings there. Junius, an interesting first name. Obviously, uh, beards and uh, beards that were not trimmed were very common for a lot of folks out there. Sort of reminds me of Ringo Starr. This is one of the few colonels that was in command of a, a brigade. And then the third corps of the entire group. Apil Hill, he's uh, seldom you see him listed as Am Ambrose. But A.P. Hill is how he's normally referred to. J.E.B. Stewart, that was her initials. <coughs> More flamboyant hat style there. Ambrose was not that uncommon of a name in the time period. Another one of the rare colonels that was in charge of a brigade. Often they were battlefield commissions. A lot of people were made uh, brigadier generals because of their efforts at uh, Gettysburg amongst the uh, Southern forces.
Brigadier General, and that's the only picture. It's a very tiny picture. It's one of the few folks out there that was one of the brigadiers that there isn't really a good picture of them. Good quality picture. And then Pender's Division. This is still the third corps of the three. And there were two guys that were primarily ahead of this, uh, him and Trimble. And another colonel that was in charge of brigade. And the hand inside your jacket, because people didn't know where to put their hands, so that's something they did. Napoleon made that famous. Uh, he went on to be a politician. And then the cavalry. J.E.B. Stewart, those were initials, not his first name wasn't Jeb. And usually each of the corps would have a, a small cavalry unit attached to them, but uh, there was a separate artillery group, or a separate uh, cavalry group, and each of them usually had a uh, uh, artillery group attached to them. So these are just some of the, the bigger names and the Brigadier Generals and the primary uh, leaders for the Confederate forces at the three-day battle in Gettysburg in southern Pennsylvania. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the button below. You're welcome to leave comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And finally, if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button over on the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you again for watching.